Hi everyone, my name is Calvin Cherry and I have written a prequel to Bram Stoker's masterpiece Dracula. So for today's video blog, I would like to do a reading from the opening of my novel, which is actually a letter that is unopened by Bram Stoker's widow Florence after Bram passes away. So this is a fictional letter, but just like in Dracula, uh, my novel consists of letters and diaries and journals. So I'm going to read a short passage. The letter itself takes about 30 minutes to read, but due to uh, time, I'm just going to read a, uh, a portion of it and then talk about it afterwards. And then the unexpected happened. My dear Flory, tis true that there are some abnormalities in human nature that are so strange that one must pass through them to fully comprehend. Insomuch a shadowy pall obscured a great deal of the details that followed. I will my mind and gall to record everything that I can recollect of that heinous night. Indeed, her very personality seemed to become absorbed by another of a malignant nature, for her mannerisms and tonal quality of her voice transitioned as words flowed in a pitch of untellable pathos. At once, the witch's speech broke off in mid-syllable, and her eyes became a dull, yellowish tint, as one would witness in a corpse that twists longing for the ground. She gasped but only once. And with a gaping mouth and an everlasting stare of unbounded horror, she fell back in her chair lifeless. As she did so, I stood spellbound on that wondrous ruby, so too those with me, as it darkened harshly around her skinny neck. At last her final words echoed in my ears for several minutes, Bagala Lacha Bachao. The remaining six did not know what to think of this. Notwithstanding, we did not comprehend the sequence of events, that is, as those of reality, until the violent hands of time proved we were not to be awakened. Henceforth, a strange fear gripped us like a bow constrictor by the throat. We looked at one another, dumbfounded, in a half-shock, half-frightened sort of way. Hitherto the ball began to glow like a blue flame, whilst an eerie semblance of foreign matter, such as specks of dust, fixated itself around the table in the form of a circle. A seething horde of spirits seemed to conjure up from the matter, and began to swarm the object to which we all were obsessed with now lackluster eyes. As I felt all of the rosiness escaped my cheeks. I sensed a new form of intelligence had entered the room. Shapeless shadows blasted from the crystal, splitting it into hundreds of minute shattered fragments. One of the members let out a shrill shriek as the largest piece struck him in the center of the skull with the immense velocity of a bullet. A raging stream of blood flowed freely from the wound. Three others fled the place in states of indescribable trepidation. So strong was the feeling to hurry from the place myself, only believing that running from the specter could only increase my plight of danger, I remained. And mustering all the bravery I could, I finally addressed it point blank. Queen Tara, is it you? So... This passage opens the, uh, my novel, and I would like to talk about it because there's a lot of interesting uh, things going on there. So, first of all, I would like to mention that the jewel that he was talking about is the jewel of the seven stars. And Bram Stoker wrote a novel called The Jewel of the Seven Stars, which was published in uh, around six years after Dracula was published in 1903. And this book is the first modern mummy tale. Uh, so a lot of people just associate Bram Stoker with Dracula, but he actually wrote the first um, modern day mummy story as well. So 
This book is interesting in the fact that uh, the second edition, he actually rewrote the last chapter. So the book that I'm holding here has both endings in it. But what I would like to mention about it is that the uh, passage that I just read from this uh, fictional letter, there's some truth to it. So not only is he referring to the Jewel of the Seven Stars, but Queen Tara was at, is actually the uh, mummy that Bram Stoker wrote about in the Jewel of the Seven Stars, and it's actually based on some history. So uh, Bram Stoker had many, many friends, and a lot of them were, were doctors and authors, uh, but Bram Stoker actually was very much into mesmerism, and he belonged to a group called the Order of the Golden Dawn. So uh, the opening letter that I just read from is about one of those seances. And Bram Stoker's name is actually on uh, several rosters. Uh, and he actually friended uh, s several people that was into Egyptology. Uh, one of them, Sir William Wilde, which uh, was the father of author Oscar Wilde, and also uh, Sir William, uh, or Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who of course is the author of the Sherlock Holmes books. So both of them were very much into e Egyptology, and so Graham became very fascinated uh, with Egyptology himself, learning about their excursions to uh, Africa, and, uh, and some of his uh, friends would actually bring back uh, mummies and uh, and one of those mummies uh, resided in uh, his friend's study and he became very fascinated with it and uh, the the mummy was expected to be a, uh, a an Egyptian goddess and uh, became nicknamed as Queen Terra so uh, that's what uh, the basis of the Jewel of the Seven Stars is about, and also I use that in the opening of uh, my own novel. So I just wanted to uh, share some of that, um, and if you're wondering about the language of the letter, I actually write my novel in Bram Stoker's voice, and I felt like it was very important to do that because uh, not only to pay tribute to Bram's remarkable work, but to also make it believable. So uh, I just want to thank you for your time again. Uh, next week I will be discussing the research that went into my novel, and in particular the uh, certain uh, books that I actually used, that Graham Soaker also used as reference. So uh, if you like what you heard, or if you know any friends that you think might uh, be interested in my book, again, it's available at all online uh, retail book sellers. And if you go into a brick and mortar store and it's not there, they can certainly order it for you. And if you happen to be interested in a signed copy, please private message me and I will be glad to connect with you and, and make that happen. So again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, very much appreciated and uh, good day.